Good morning, boys and girls. It's good to uh, be with here here another Sunday. Um, grateful to uh, come and uh, lead you in singing and in prayer and studying God's word. And that's what we're going to get started with doing right now. Um, we are going to close our eyes and bow our heads, and we are going to ask God to help us right now during this time. So let's let's do that now. Let's close our eyes. Let's bow our heads. Let's quiet our lips. And let's pray and ask God's help uh, for this time. Thank you, Lord, for uh, gathering us together today, uh, for allowing us time to worship you, to love you, uh, to sing to you and rejoice in the things that you have done on our behalf. Uh, we love you and ask that you would help us to turn our hearts and minds to you now, help us to be disciplined and, and uh, to listen well, uh, to sing well, and to glorify and honor you uh, this morning. Uh, that is our desire, and we need your help to do that. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, well, boys and girls, we are going to uh, start out our singing this morning uh, by uh, singing uh, the song that we did last week, um, uh, the Jesus Loves Me song. Um, I, I did that. Uh, just for our little ones, but it's also, again, it's for our older ones as well. Um, I love singing this song, and I have um, I do it a lot all the time. <laughs> I do it all the time um, because I do love it, and uh, the Bible tells us clearly that Jesus loves us, and um, this is something that we can sing with one another. And uh, so let's do that now, and then we are going to go into singing, You Are My God. I will give thanks to the Lord. Uh, so let's get started singing, okay? Jesus loves me, this I know For the Bible tells me so Little ones to Him belong They are weak, but He is strong Yes, Jesus loves me Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. For the Bible tells me so. Remember the next verse. Jesus loves. Uh, uh, Jesus loves me. He says, I love Jesus. Uh, does he know? Have I ever told him so? Jesus loves me. I love Jesus, does he know? Have I ever told him so? Jesus loves to hear me say That I love him every day Yes, I love Jesus Yes, I love Jesus Yes, I love Jesus, in prayer I tell him so. Boys and girls, do you tell Jesus you love him every day? Do you tell him that when you pray? I hope so. Oh, give thanks to the Lord good for his steadfast love endures forever oh give thanks to the lord for he is good for his steadfast love endures forever you my god and i will give thanks to you forever 
I'll give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, for His steadfast love endures forever. I'll give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, for His steadfast love endures forever. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, and I will extol you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. For His steadfast love endures forever. steadfast love endures forever all right good singing boys and girls we are going to now turn our uh, attention to God's word so go ahead and open your Bibles to 2nd Samuel 2 Samuel chapter 11, and we're going to be looking uh, not only at chapter 11, but also chapter 12. And um, as you're turning there, can you think of a time in which you were forgiven, in which you were forgiven, or maybe a time in which you forgave someone else? You know, because not only do we need to be forgiven, but we also have to forgive others when they, they do wrong to us. And um, oftentimes we're, <laughs> uh, uh, we're not willing uh, to ask for forgiveness. And then there are times where uh, we are also unwilling to forgive. And boys and girls, that's, that's a dangerous thing because God forgives us. God has uh, said that He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. And so um, we have all sinned. You know, there's, there's no question. The Bible says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. There's none of us that have, there's no one on this earth that has not sinned. There is no one on this earth that is uh, holy and pure like God is. The only one that has ever been on this earth that is like that was Jesus Christ, right? Now, as a result of our disobedience, as a result of the sin within us, uh, God says we are to confess our sin and to ask for forgiveness of those we have sinned against. Now, have you ever done that before? Have you ever asked for forgiveness? Now, you might, you know, you may do something to your brother or your sister or your mom or your dad or to someone else and, and um, the mom or dad or your teacher or your leader of some sort, they might say, now, what do you need to do? You say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for doing that. I'm sorry. And boys and girls, it's, it's good for us to apologize. However, we also must practice this asking for forgiveness uh, because uh, just saying I'm sorry, just saying I'm sorry is, is, uh, is, is not the full expression of uh, following after what God has set forth that we are to do. If I just tell God I'm sorry all the time, uh, that may not express a genuine sorrow within me for what I've done because that's what saying I'm sorry does it's it's expressing that sorrow for doing something that was wrong and also admitting that I was wrong but in in asking for forgiveness you're you're actually telling that person I have done you wrong I've done wrong against you and you are the only one that can free me of the burden of of guilt you are the only one that can free me 
of knowing that I have wronged you in that moment. And that's how we forgive others is we are releasing the guilt of, of what they have done for, uh, against us. Uh, we are releasing that, that weight upon them of, of, of you have wronged me in this way and I won't uh, account that to you any longer because that's what God does. That's what God does. If we ask him for forgiveness and uh, we are in Christ. He counts that to what Christ did for us on our behalf by dying for those sins. It's a beautiful picture, boys and girls, of what God has done for us. I want to ask you, uh, do you know what the word repent means? Do you know what the word repent means? Well, repent means to, to turn away from sin and to turn toward God. To, to repent is you are turning away from that sin and you're going in the complete opposite direction. And, and if sin is completely evil and wicked and utterly despicable, the complete opposite of that only has to be God because God is holy and pure and lovely and good, the complete opposite of sin. And so in the Bible story that we're going to hear today, a man named Nathan actually told David, King David, whom we've been talking about, that he needed to repent. David uh, had done something very sinful, very wrong, and Nathan comes to him and says, you need to repent. You need to repent. David tried to hide his sin, but boys and girls, can we hide from God? Well, today's story, um, David sinned and was restored. What does the word restore mean? Well, restore means to bring back to or to put back into an earlier or original state. In other words, it's when you restore something, you take something that is broken down and it's brittle. Maybe it looks a horrible. Maybe, uh, maybe you're thinking of a table or a chair that just looks awful. And you need to go in and you need to sand it. You need to cl uh, brush it off and clean it and vacuum it. Um, and then maybe you need to even put in some screws to secure it, fasten it, make it stronger in that way, put in a new board. Um, and then maybe you want to add some paint to it to make it look beautiful. Um, that is what restoration is. That's what restoring is. Taking something that once was nice, but then now as a result of time and and aging, it is broken down, and you're going to take that and you're going to try and make it new again. Boys and girls, we're going to talk about that restoration even today because David needed to be restored. Isn't that great? Uh, have, you, have you ever messed up and, and, and wanted to be forgiven, wanted to be restored? Maybe you offended your friend or your parents. And, and you're just like, think you're, the guilt is upon you. And you're like, man, I, you know, I, I wish I could go back and undo that. You know, I, I really didn't want to say that. Or I really didn't want to do that. And, and, um, and yet in my own sin, in my own sinful heart, I did do those things. Well, our Bible story today tells us about how David sinned and God restored him. And boys and girls, you can be restored. Maybe you've messed up in the, ne in the last day. Maybe, um, maybe you messed up already this morning, and you need to be restored. You're, you're, you're at war with your brother or your sister. You're at war with mom or dad, and, and you're struggling with what you've done, and, and you need to go, and you need to repent. You need to turn away from that sin and go to them and say, I'm so sorry. I was wrong for what I did. Uh, will you please forgive me for doing that? Boys and girls, in our story today, the Ammonites were no strangers to the Israelites. They often fought over the region of Gilead, uh, which it stretched east of the Jordan River. And David had tried showing kindness to the Ammonites, but they humiliated Israelite ambassadors 
If you go back to 2 Samuel chapter 10, that's where that account happens, where the ambassadors of the Israelites were humiliated by the Ammonites. And as a result, this massive war broke out. This really big war broke out. Um, and David, as king, you know, sent his armies, sent his military to go and, um, and, and make up for this, essentially. He was, he was sending them out because of what the Ammonites had done to the Israelite uh, ambassadors. And this is the context that we are going into in our, uh, our, in our Bible story today in, in 2 Samuel chapter 11. So 2 Samuel chapter 11 uh, begins in verse 1. So let's begin there. It happened in the spring of the time of the year, at the time when kings go out to battle, that David sent Joab and his servants with him and all Israel, and they destroyed the people of Ammon and besieged Rabbah. But David remained at Jerusalem. Then it happened one evening that David arose from his bed and walked on the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman bathing, and the woman was very beautiful to behold. So David sent and inquired about the woman. And someone said, Is this not Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? Then David sent messengers and took her, and she came to him, and he lay with her, for she was cleansed from her impurity, and she returned to her house. And the woman conceived, so she sent and told David, and said, I am with child. Then David sent to Joab, saying, Send me Uriah the Hittite, when Joab sent Uriah to David. Now, boys and girls, in this story now, David has committed a great sin. And it starts in the very beginning. They are at war with, with the Ammonites. And King David, the king, who should be at war with his, his military, sends someone else in his place. And he remains at home in the king's palace, in the king's um, uh, upper court. And it says that, that he is there just relaxing. He's there uh, enjoying the victory that is being won. And boys and girls, that is, that is a scary place to be in where David is just, he's just enjoying the spoils of victory. He's just enjoying uh, his time of relaxing. And he's not being careful of guarding his own soul of getting closer to the Lord. And we see some great effects here because he looks and he peers and he sees a beautiful woman. And this woman is actually the wife of another man. And David inquires about her and he falls in love with her. Boys and girls, this is a horrible sin that is being committed by David. This is grievous sin to God that is being committed by David. And David follows through. And this, this wife of another man, Bathsheba, it says that she conceives a child with David. She actually has a child. And it goes on. And David tries to hide his sins. This was something you know, that was uh, not just something just because he was king he could do. It was still sinful. It was still wrong. And other people you know, were saying, well, isn't that, isn't that Uriah's wife? David assumed, probably assumed that his sin would go unnoticed you know, because of his stature, because of him being king, until Bathsheba had told him that she was pregnant. She was with child. And with Uriah gone to war, it was obvious that the baby was, was David. So there was no hiding it. Boys and girls, have you ever had tried to hide your sin before? Maybe you hurt your brother or your sister, and you're like, "Oh, well, quiet, quiet, quiet!" You know, we'll 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 bandage it up. We'll we'll we'll, uh, we'll I'll comfort you right now. I'll go get you some ice, and and you try and hide it, or 
or, or maybe you broke something and you try and put it back together and, and, and you know, trying to hide, conceal your sin. Oh, boys and girls, we, we cannot hide our sin. We should not hide our sin because we cannot hide our sin from God, right? Well, David had a plan in trying to hide his sin. And boys and girls, that's what, that's what always happens in our sinful hearts, and our sinful minds. We know we are guilty, we know we are sinful, and we think, I'm going to hide my sin, and I will go to whatever length, whatever degree is necessary to hide my sin. I'll lie about it, which God says lies are, are horrible, are wicked, are sin. We will try to... Um, uh, maybe blame someone else in lying. And then David went really far with this. Not that lying is not bad, but David went as far as saying, you know what? Uriah is at war. I bet I can get rid of Bathsheba's, Bathsheba's husband, Uriah, and he will be killed. In other words, David was willing to commit murder to hide his own sin. Whew, man, David, David had a plan. He called Uriah home from the battle. He encouraged him to be with his wife, thinking that it would look like he's going to have a child with her now and all that. But Uriah refused. Uriah says, my men are at war. I need to be with my men. I need to be at battle with them, uh, fighting with, alongside of them. Uriah was a faithful man. And so that plan didn't work. So David had to take that plan B that he had back in his mind and thinking, all right, I'm going to instruct him. He's the army commander, and his position is going to be the most violent part of the battle. I'm going to send him forth to the very front lines. I'm going to send him forth, and he is going to go in front of the battle, and he will be killed. That's what David said. David's plan worked, boys and girls. Uriah was killed, and David took Bathsheba as his wife. And in David's mind, he's probably thinking, great, yes, my plan worked. I've gotten away with my sin. And boys and girls, that's not how it works. There are times in our lives where we think we get away from things. We get away with things. We hide our sin. We can conceal it. We can, uh, we can gloss over it and people think that everything's fine. That's not okay. It's sinful. It's wicked. And we can't hide it long. God knew David's sin. And he sent Nathan, the prophet, to confront David. So verse, uh, verse 1 of chapter 12. Let's look at that. Chapter 12 of 2 Samuel. Then the Lord sent Nathan to David. He came to him. He said to him, There were two men in one city, one rich, the other poor. The rich man had exceedingly many flock and herds, but the poor man had nothing except one little ewe lamb, which he had bought and nourished. And it grew up together with him and with his children. It ate of his own food and drank from his own cup and lay into his bosom, and it was like a daughter to him. And a traveler came to the rich man who refused to take from his own flock and from his own herd to prepare one of the wayfaring uh, man who had come to him. But he took the poor man's lamb and prepared it for the man who had come to him. So David's anger, here David, King David, who had done all this sin, who committed this great sin, Nathan's telling him this story. He's telling him this story, and, and, and how does David respond? Look at this. Verse 5, David's anger was greatly aroused against the man. And he said to Nathan, as the Lord lives, the man who has done this shall, shall surely die. And he shall restore fourfold for the lamb, because he did this thing and because he had no pity. Then Nathan said to David, You are 
the man. Thus says the Lord God of Israel, I anointed you king over Israel, and I delivered you from the hand of Saul. I gave you your master's house and your master's wives into your keeping, and gave you the house of Israel and Judah. And if that had been too little, I also would have given you much more. Why have you despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight? You have killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword. You have taken his wife to be your wife and have killed him with the sword of the people of Ammon. Now, therefore, the sword shall never depart from your house because you have despised me and have taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be your wife. Thus says the Lord, Behold, I will raise up adversity against you from your own house, and I will take your wives before your eyes and give them to your neighbor, and he shall lie with your wives and in sight of the sun. For you did it secretly, but I will do this thing before all Israel, before the sun. So David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said to David, The Lord also has put away your sin. You shall not die. However, because by this deed you have given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme, the child also who is born to you shall surely die. Then Nathan departed to his house. God knew David's sin, boys and girls, and he sent Nathan the prophet to tell David that very thing. David confessed to the Lord, though. Nathan, Nathan told um, uh, David, listen, this is the word from God. God had anointed you. He put you over the house of Israel. He, you were king. He gave you everything that you wanted, desired. It was all yours. And if, you, if there had been more that God wanted you to have, he would have given it to you. But there was no more for him to give you. But David, in his sin, decided he wanted more. And he went as far as even killing a man so he could have what he wanted. Thinking he had hid a sin. But Nathan made that clear. You, not, you cannot hide from God. And in Psalm 51, there is a confession of David of that sin. Psalm 51. Let's look at that real fast. Psalm 51. To the chief musician, a psalm of David, when Nathan the prophet went to him after he had gone to Bathsheba. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin, for I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight, that you may be found just when you speak and blameless when you judge. Boys and girls, David is declaring what God uh, has already told him. David is saying, I am guilty before you, God. I have greatly sinned against you. I have sinned against you to the point that, um, that I deserve to die, God. There is nothing more that I can do. And the prophet Nathan, as you see on the screen, has come to David and gave him this story and has told David that you are guilty. But here in Psalm 51... And David's prayer of repentance, of turning away from his sin and asking God for forgiveness, David finds restoration. God forgave David when he repented of his sins, boys and girls. God forgave David of his sins. Boys and girls, he declares who God is. He says, you, uh, you and your loving kindness... You have been merciful to me. And boys and girls, God is merciful to David. He is merciful to us. David knew making sacrifices would not be enough to please God. 
and pay for his sin. There was nothing he could physically do that would undo the ramifications of his sin, that would undo the consequences of his sin. God wanted David's heart to change so he would not want to sin again. And boys and girls, he wants our hearts to change as well so that we won't want to sin. God forgave David when he repented of his sin. But sin always comes with a price. And God spared David's life, but many troubles came to David's life. Even David, the greatest of Israel's kings and a man after God's own heart, was a sinner in need of salvation. Boys and girls, the punishment of sin is death. For the wages of sin is death. Remember, we are all sinners and we deserve death and destruction. We deserve the wrath of an almighty, powerful, holy God. And like David, we need more than a changed lifestyle to be made right with God. We can't just look good. We can't just go and clean up our act. We can't just go and, and make sure we don't look muddy and, and guilty. We need more than a changed lifestyle to be right with God. We need new hearts. And boys and girls, can you, can you change your own heart? Can you go in and, 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 and make it pure and make it holy and make it righteous as God is? We can't. But Jesus died to do that. Jesus died to satisfy God's wrath, to, to take our guilt, to take our, our shame. And he would satisfy God's wrath against sin that we could be made alive in him. That's what Jesus has done for us. When we sin, we can receive God's forgiveness because God sent his son Jesus to pay the price for our sin. Jesus died the death and that we deserve so that he could be made right, so that we could be made right with God. Jesus died so that we would be made right. A holy, just man, a man who had never sinned in his life, he died and took our sins so that we could be made right with God. God is so good to us. Not only would he come and declare us as sinners and his wrath come against us, but then he would provide us the way that we could be forgiven. Unjust individuals being rightly judged by God, yet giving mercy, given grace by that God. Now I know these stories of Israel's kings can be discouraging. Boys and girls, they weren't perfect. King David Although a man after God's own heart, although he loved the Lord, he was still not perfect. He was still not sinful or sinless. But don't forget the answer to our big question. Who is our king? You know, David was the king of Israel and he was anointed and chosen by God, but he was not perfect. But who is our king? Our king is King Jesus. He is perfect, He is just, He is righteous. There is none like God. Who is our King? Jesus is our King forever, right? He rules over all the world. Jesus is our King forever. He rules over all the world. Boys and girls, what does Psalm 47 verses 7 and 8 say? You remember that verse that we've been going over? It says, For God is the king of all the earth. Sing praises with the psalm. God reigns over all the over the nations. God sits on his holy throne. God is king forever. There is none like him. There will never be anyone else like him. And yet he desires to make us holy as he is holy and it is only by him that he that we can be made holy and he's provided a way david knew he couldn't cleanse his own heart and god made a way for him to be cleansed he says ask me to forgive you he says make this right nathan says you need to repent and when he does he's david nathan tells him 
you have been forgiven. God has put away your sin. That's, that's hard for us to comprehend, but it's even harder to comprehend what that means for God, who is perfect and holy. Boys and girls, He is good. I will give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. For his steadfast love endures forever. You are my God and I will give thanks to you. That should be on our lips every day. Every morning, I'll give thanks to the Lord for he is good. For his steadfast love endures forever. Let us pray and let's rejoice in what God has done in that. Father, thank you for your kindness. We do give thanks to you for your steadfast love endures forever, for the mercy that you have shown us, God. Help us to be mindful of that. I pray for these boys and girls that they would call upon you, repenting of their sin, asking you to save them from their sin, to, um, to, to no longer desire to, to disobey, but give them new hearts, Lord, because only you can change them. Help those that are unable to help themselves because we can't do that, Lord. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, boys and girls, I, I hope you have um, a wonderful rest of your Sunday and that um, uh, you've been blessed by this time as much as I have. And I look forward to seeing you again soon. And have a wonderful day. I love you. I'll be praying for you uh, this week. Take care.